welcome back. This is the first non-tech video I've done for a little while um, and uh, I've got a very specific reason for doing it. Okay, it's another Agatha Christie video and you know that she is um, probably my favourite author. Um, and the reason I'm doing this one um, is because it's exact, It's a hundred years since she wrote her first novel which was The uh, Mysterious Affair at Styles. Now, I sent away for the 100th anniversary edition of it and was a little bit disappointed in the cover um, because I like covers that have been illustrated by Tom Adams. So that's another reason I'm making this video because sadly Tom Adams passed away in December of last year. Now, you remember his illustrations. I've shown them to you before. In fact, I made a video on them. They're all very graphic. They all indicate a little bit of the plot um, and they're all uh, sometimes very macabre. However, when I started looking into this, I realised that he'd never ever done um, a, a, a cover for her first novel. I found that a little bit peculiar. Um, so he's done so many, but not for her first one. And I started looking into, the, in, into it, and that unfortunately took me down a fairly rocky road. Um, he did an awful lot of illustrations, but none for that particular book. And the question is, why? So that's what this video is going to be about. But before we move on to that, let's have a look at some of the titles, um, some of the covers um, that were made for... Uh, the Mysterious Affair at Styles. So well, let's have a look at some of those now. And I'll tell you, I haven't got all of them because there are so many of them. And later in the video, we're going to try and examine the reason why there wasn't uh, a cover made for The Mysterious Affair at Styles. Or was there? Welcome to part two, uh, and I've entitled this Collecting Tom Adams' uh, Graphics on Agatha Christie Covers. You might think that was quite straightforward, but there's a word of warning that I need to give you because it's not that straightforward. Let me just give you an example. By the pricking of my thumbs, fine, it's listed as attributed to Tom Adams, but there's no name on it at all. Uh, just a picture of Agatha on the back. Another version of this book, you can see they're uh, transposed. This one actually says cover painting by Tom Adams. Um, so there's one little dilemma. Halloween Party um, is actually illustrated by Tom Adams and it's in this, this book, um, the Agatha Christie cover story, but there's no Tom Adams name on it. Now that becomes a problem um, because when you look at the book for the first one, the um, pricking of my, by the pricking of my thumbs, that's the picture it shows you. Now that's the American version of, of the book cover that Tom Adams did for the American market. So already you can see the confusion creeping in. Let's just add to that a little bit. Um, there are some books illustrated by either um, Colin Thomas, who was a graphic illustrator and artist, um, or an Ian Robertson, who was also a graphic, graphic illustrator and artist. Now, sometimes when um, Tom Adams wasn't available to do the illustration for, for one of her books, 
um, the publisher uh, allocated one of these two people to do it in the same style. Now let me just show you this one. This one is by uh, Ian Robertson and if it's an Ian Robertson uh, illustration then there, his name doesn't appear on it anywhere. But does it look like a Tom Adams? Of course it does. And the clocks not attributed to Tom Adams but does that look like a Tom Allen Adams illustration? Of course it does. But it's actually by Ian Robertson. Moving on to this one, which again looks like a Tom uh, and uh, a Tom Adams uh, illustration, um, and if you look at the back, it says cover uh, illustration by Colin Thomas. So if it's a Colin Thomas illustration, it will be um, listed on the back. If it's a Ian Robertson illustration, it won't be listed. If it's a um, a Tom Adams illustration, it may or may not be listed. Um, so you can see the confusion that can come in. My only um, advice to you is, if you're want to, if you're a purist and you only want to have uh, Tom Adams illustrations, then look very carefully. Um, there is a website, a very good website, um, which I'm going to put up now on the screen, uh, which gives you a listing of all the various books. Added to that, there's another um, uh, another series of American covers uh, done for pocket books, and they again are entirely different uh, pictures. Um, I don't have any of them. I'd love a collection of those, um, but there we go. So a word of warning in this section: be advised that not everything is as it seems. Now, isn't that like Agatha Christie? We're going to move on now to solving the mystery of the missing cover for the mysterious affair at Styles. Welcome back. Um, the other evening when I was trying to do this research I was getting a bit desperate. There were so many false leads. But at the end of this book, which is the um, Tom Adams Uncovered book, again an excellent volume, right at the very end there's an addendum. And in that addendum there is um, some other pictures that Tom Adams painted that were not used on Agatha Christie books. Um, and uh, these are those two. They're, they're not very plain to see, but you can see, obviously, they're not um, the ones that are on the book cover. Beyond that, we have a portrait of Agatha Christie, um, which I'll, I'll put up for you in a moment. And then at the very last two pages in the book, we have the one that is on a cover, and that's the uh, Greenshore Folly, um, and I've already showed you that earlier on. It's in um, this book. We're on the cover of that book. And then at the very last page, Eureka, I found it. There's the picture of um, that he painted for the mysterious affair at... There's the picture that he painted for the mysterious affair at Styles. So where was it? Why wasn't it on my 100th anniversary edition, as I thought it would be? What book is it on? So again, I went on to that website that I mentioned earlier, and right down the bottom of it, lo and behold, the mystery was solved. Because there um, was the a two-book edition um, published uh, in America and in this country, and it included the first book, which is The Mysterious Affair at Styles, and it also included Curtain, the last book that Pyro appeared in. They were hardback editions, and lo and behold, on the covers of both of them were two paintings that he actually did. Um, one for this, 
the, the other one's not shown in this book, which is which is rather strange, and one for Curtin. And I'm going to show you those now. And they were published as a hundredth centenary celebration of her of of her writing, and um, both of them were in the same hardback cupboard. Cupboard. May as well been in a cupboard, really. <laughs> Same hardback cover, sleeve, right, shall I say. Two hardbacks in the same sleeve. And this appeared on the cover of The Mysterious Affair. Um, now, I thought, right, I'll dive in and, um, and grab those. I'll buy a copy of it. However, when I went on to the website, um, there, it was sold by Amazon Books uh, USA. And it was also sold... Um, by uh, another book company in, in this country. But when I went on, I was a little bit amazed. Um, the USA edition was £200 plus a substantial fee for postage and packing. So that put it out my field. Thinking there might have been an error, I went on to the, um, the, the book company in this country and again it was uh, £200 uh, plus quite a fee for postage and packing and in that instance they were out of stock. So the mystery was solved. This picture does appear on a book cover. It does appear on the mysterious affair at Styles, but is a little bit out of the reach of most of us. But anyway it was published and what's interesting as well Below, on that website, below the, 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 the um, sleeve cover, the plain sleeve cover, there's nothing on the sleeve cover, there is these two illustrations. And that was the link that I suddenly realised that these two illustrations were actually included in the book. If all this seems slightly complicated and, and convoluted, yes it is. Um, it's a pity that... Uh, the, the copyrights and the publishing rights and the various other legal um, uh, intricacies didn't allow uh, this beautiful picture of the stretcher bearers uh, and the magnolia and the red candle to appear on the cover. But there it is, mystery solved. It is available, it is on the cover, um, if you can afford it. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it's not been too protracted and I hope you found it interesting. I've just received a new book on, on a, a about Agatha Christie in the Post and it's a, a really nice volume. It's by Brett Hawthorne and he's been around Devon um, photographing the places where Agatha Christie used to write and used to inhabit. And in there uh, there's a picture of Hay Tor where she began her story of the mysterious affair at Styles. Lots to read in that. I haven't even touched it yet. If you really want an insight into um, into her works, um, I can recommend this one, uh, Agatha Christie, uh, Reader's Companion, and it goes through every book she's written, um, and it gives the pictures, uh, the the the, the uh, covers, the original covers of, of the, that were that were done at the time and um, a synopsis of the story, the characterization, and uh, the history of her writing uh, these novels. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've come to the end now, I promise, but there's so much more I could talk about when I talk about Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie and also um, the illustrations of Tom Adams, who, as I say, sadly passed away last year. Thank you for watching and as always take care.